Welcome to Sadie Hawkins Pod. It's me, the Doctor, the time traveller from the future and some other planet. Look out behind you. There are weeping angels. Don't you blink. Don't even think about blinking. They're fast, faster than you can believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. Isn't that right? Whichever companion was in this episode. That's right. Don't you (laughs) blink. (sighs) Nerd. Oh. (laughs) That's not nice. (laughs) Don't blink, or this episode will be over. We're back, ready to talk about collapsible lung. And it has been, for you all, it actually hasn't been that long. It's only been about six days. But for us, it's been a long time because we went on a whole trip. We had a whole thing going on. Yep. Time moves so slow, yet so fast. It's all wibbly-wobbly, timey It's all wibbly-wobbly time stuff. (laughs) Yeah, we're here talking, getting ready to talk about the song Don't Blink off of Collapsible Lung. But there's been so much going on in our lives. If you uh, were waiting for the Forget and Not Slow Down episode, then and you looked on our social media, you probably knew about this. But we were half a day late posting that because Jessica and I took a trip to Portland. And it was a wonderful time. We had a great time. But like in the middle of it, we're like... We have to finish the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was editing in the car as we were driving, like, through the, through, like, Hood Mountain. And, yeah. Or Mount Hood. Right. Yeah. So it was, like, a crazy week trying to get that up. And then it finally, finally got it up late, late Wednesday night. And... But we want to apologize for the audio quality. I don't you know what to. happened there. <laughs> yeah, I want to apologize for the audio quality. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why we sound like we're underwater, but I have hopefully fixed whatever the issue was this week. And if you haven't, then it's extra ironic that we sound like we're underwater. <laughs> Here we are. Collapsible back in Los Angeles. Lung. Collapsible lung. Well, we do have some top of the show business. Oh. We got a voicemail. Let's see, let's let's hear who the voicemail's from. It's me, the doctor. <laughs> Dan and Jess, you're in trouble. <laughs> no, we're done with that. <laughs> There's no voicemails. I got excited for like a second. I know. And then I knew. I, like, I want to do this every week. I, I was wanna... somewhere between 50-50 as to whether it was just going to be you being a goofus or we actually got one. <laughs> goofus. I wanted to... I want to do this every week, but I know I'm going to get your hopes up. No, we're having tons of interaction on Twitter now, yeah, which is great. So many people have been tweeting at us and mentioning things and liking stuff on Instagram. The Instagram finally feels like it's going, but no voicemail. So people, please send us your voicemails. 402-95-SADIE. You can just call. It's a voicemail. No live person's going to pick up. Maybe we need to state this because, you know, people have phone anxiety nowadays. I have phone anxiety. You have phone anxiety. People don't like picking up their phone and making calls. All you got to do, leave a voicemail. Tell us what you think about the podcast. Tell us what you think about the songs we've been covering. If you've just started listening and you go back, tell us about songs you've done in the past. We don't mind. Just leave voicemails. We want to make you famous. (laughs) Plug Plug your crap. Tell Plug us how you bands. feel about collapsible lung. Tell us how did you... you did you come in as Reliant K fan with collapsible lung? Yes. Do you, how do you feel about collapsible just... lung? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but yeah, we've been talking about collapsible lung a lot. Like we actually had a little bit of a collapsible lung like theme going through our week in Portland. And we're talking about the album, but we're like, no, save that for the podcast. And I've got these points that I didn't want to tell Jessica ahead of time. I still haven't been able to sit and listen to all of the We listened to half the record. Sitting. We were like, we should listen to the full record because neither of us had ever heard it from me. Any... We're getting ahead of ourselves, but we'll just quickly say this. On our trip to Portland, we listened to half the album between like our hotel and we wanted to go to the Lloyd Center Mall, which is like a quarter shut, like a quarter of the place is shuttered, right? It's like... It's still a somewhat hopping mall, but some stuff is closed. It's not a sad mall. There's it's not an a dead ice mall. skating rink. There in is it. an ice skating rink. It's in the middle of a nice neighborhood, but it's like not a lot of people seem to go in that mall. 
point is they have a Suncoast video. And we were like, yeah. we got to go check out the Suncoast video. So as we're between our hotel and the Suncoast video, we listen to like a third, a half of the album. And then we go in, we do our whole thing. We come back out and we're like, we don't want to listen to the album anymore. We want to <laughs> listen to other stuff. We, I, talk, I did tweet about this ahead of time as well to, the, to our Twitter account. We're going to have a good cop, bad cop situation when it comes to this album. Yep. <laughs> but before we get into all of that discussion, there's a couple of things that we need to mention, both related to other podcasts out there in the world. The first is, I want to thank, we've talked about them before, but Blink-155, who are an astronomically more successful podcast <laughs> than us. And I've been sort of entrenched with their fandom from early on, because as we mentioned, I run an MXPX memes account. And when I discovered a Blink-182 podcast, I'm like, hey, that's sort of in line with what I'm doing. And then basically Josiah from that podcast name dropped our podcast, which was great. It was like three weeks back, but we've been on a certain schedule, so we're only getting it to getting to it now. So Jessica has not heard this yet. So I'm going to play this for Jessica right now. It was in their episode 108 where they covered, I wish it was a better song. It was when they covered the song Untitled Number Two. <laughs> like an early forgotten demo that's been leaked. So it's part of their list of 155 Blink-182 songs. But it'd be cool if it was like part of um, Miss You. That's a famous song, right? This is Blink-155 talking about Sadie Hawkins pod. Um, apparently Mer- Reliant K have a song, I Need You, that has... 15th fret harmonics is that is that one you're familiar with no i'm not um but i guess because i'm feeling nice i'll plug that someone from the nation just started uh uh danny mxpx memes and his wife just started a patent blink 155 ripoff Ugh. but it's all about reliant k songs i think it's called the sadie hawkins pod sick um, and they're talking about different reliant k songs so maybe we can go on that one when they, they talk get about to that, that song, song. <laughs> yeah, that would and be talk so- about the harmonics and just do this whole up. Ep- Maybe we can send them the the stems for this episode, and they can just use that for their pod. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Uh, the roundabout by Yes. It sounds like. They- so there you go. What do you think? Blink One Fifty Five mentioned us. You could tell he was a little trepidatious. He's like, oh, since I feel like being nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for the shout out. But hey, if you guys think you're gonna get on the I Need You episode. Uh, get in line, because <laughs> everyone's clamoring to be on Sadie Hawkins' pod. <laughs> April, very unprofessional. April's trying to get on the podcast. I know, now. April's trying to get on the podcast right now. But I'm like, dude, we're talking about the best Reliant K album. Listen, oh. listen. If Collapsible Lung is your favorite Reliant K album, you're a <laughs> fucking cop. <laughs> Then consider me a cop. <laughs> well, one other pod, one other related podcast thing we have to mention is I discovered that there is another podcast out that we thought we were first to the party, but there's another Reliant K podcast out there. Uh oh. There's only they only have two episodes. Well, actually, there I think there was an official Reliant K podcast. It was like a video podcast they posted to like Apple around the time of uh, Forget oh, Not cool. Slow Down or something like that. I've been meaning to look into that, but I haven't. There's another fan podcast. They only had two episodes, and they haven't posted since, like, December of last year. Hmm. So they could come back any time. Uh-oh. Maybe now, maybe if we get the market going. Right now, we have 100% market share. <laughs> <laughs> but if Reliable J comes back, then we're screwed. We're going to lose a piece of that pie. But yeah, Why isn't there enough for everybody? There's All no the way. K no. Content. No. There's only one Reliant K fan <laughs> podcast you come to. And they're married and they're adorable and they're us. I don't know if these two are married. <laughs> these two are ripping us off back in the past. Because, no, they seem like nice people. But they're also a guy and a girl. But they have, like, shorter episodes, like, in 45 mm-hmm. minutes, half an hour. And there's only, like, two episodes, There's only two right? episodes. And they seem to, like, before they stopped with, at the second episode, it seemed like they were going off of themed ideas. Like, mm-hmm. let's mention our favorite songs and let's mention our favorite songs off each album and all this kind of stuff. And our favorite albums, or whatever they were. I don't. I did listen to them, but so Reliable J, if you're out there, we're your only follower on Twitter. Please come back. <laughs> we need a community. What I was joking before about how the market can be can't be big enough. It's not true. Reliable J, we need you back. We need you to be the the yin to our yang. 
We brought back some of this lovely Portland beer. Danny might be a little tipsy. You know what? That is appropriate for this album because this album, they <laughs> said, forget it. We'll throw morals to the wall. Oh, no. That's, that is done with <laughs> Jessica's. So, okay. If you followed us from the Twitter and you're like, who's going to be the good cop? Who's going to be the bad cop when it comes to collapsible lung? Well, I'm the good cop and Jessica's the bad cop because we've had many conversations about this album. Both of us, when we when this album came out, we were both like, why does this, why is this album this way? It's their big, mm-hmm. it's their pop album. We didn't know it at the time, but it's the album that has a lot of collaboration, like a lot of other songwriters mm-hmm. involved, whereas Reliant K was always just sort of the core. It was Matt Thiessen and the core group. Mm-hmm. Right, so there's a lot going on with this album. They experimented, they tried something, they sort of branched out in a way. And some people can hear this album and say, oh, they're quote-unquote selling out. Or some other people can hear it and say, oh, they're doing something. And people might say, well, we don't like this album. The the The... Wikipedia says the album reviews are mixed. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of negative response to this. And I've seen only the very slightest bit of positive response. (laughs) I mean, what do you do with an album where every song sounds like it should be in a car commercial? Vicious. (laughs) Vicious Jessica. (laughs) The, the other podcast is called Reliable J. This podcast should be called Vicious Yes. <laughs> she's got her claws out. <laughs> tonight, tonight we're drinking oh, no. Deschutes Black Butte 29th Birthday Reserve. Correction, tonight you're drinking. Tonight I'm drinking that. <laughs> Jessica <laughs> is sober as a saint, ready to dig her claws into <laughs> Collabs of Alone. So when we talked, when we started talking about this project, like, we hadn't as a podcast, right? This was like the big thing. It's like, <laughs> how do we discuss Collapse Belong? Because both of us weren't really like receptive to this album. Right. But preparing over the last, we were talking about doing this podcast for a couple months before we started. And in doing that, in, in talking about it, I started listening to more Reliant K songs, especially the albums I hadn't really dug into, like these last, the last three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I got to this album, I'm like, you know, this album. Mm-hmm. It's not, a, it's not really a Reliant K album, but it's pretty good. That's the thing, is that it's a fine album. It's not a Reliant K album. Oh, you're already softening on your position. You're getting ready to flip flop. No, no, I, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it is, I understand wanting to, and you know what? John Mayer does this as well, where like every John Mayer album is a little different you know, he's got, he's done like a folk kind of album. He's <sighs> done. <laughs> My point is that John Mayer does a little something different with each album. And Reliant K has done that as well. This just felt like such a departure from th- everything they've done everything. before. Yeah. It's kind of funny because last week when we talked about Forget and Not Slow Down, the song, I looked into people's reactions to the album. So many people had this sense of like this is them departing from their pop punk roots which is something because i haven't talked about this before but i like when i used to see reliant k during the first three albums like multiple times a year because they were constantly coming through and i would talk with them and meet you know meet them after shows all the time i remember matt Thiessen having a very specific viewpoint and i'm talking like early early 2000s 2000 2001 2002 Matt Thiessen voicing at the time this very specific viewpoint that we're not a punk band. And it wasn't to me, and I, and I like, because I've heard this from him, I'd heard this from him firsthand. He wasn't saying, oh, forget punk, punk is stupid. It wasn't that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It was more like, he's like, hey, punk is like serious. This is the way he, I felt he said it, meant it. Punk is like serious business. Like if you're going to be a punk band, you have to be sincere and mean it or you have no credibility in doing it. And Reliant K in the early 2000s was like, we're just like a pop rock band Mm -hmm. because we don't want to be, we don't want to claim that we're punk. And it's funny because nowadays pop punk has evolved, especially online in like the Tumblr and Instagram world. Like the word pop punk when I grew up, when I was a kid and like, you know, high school and early college years pop punk pop punk was kind of a dirty word Mm -hmm. like oh you guys are pop punk you're not really punk and if you wanted to be a punk band that was famous you had to be a punk band 
this is like the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So that's how I thought Reliant K was like saying, hey, we're not punk, right? But then people just kind of kept labeling them as punk and then pop punk. And by the mid to late 2000s, pop punk sort of evolves of what it really means. And there's this whole new generation of kids, of fans who love the term pop punk and love pop punk. Right. So Reliant K, maybe later, I don't know, because I hadn't, you know, communicated with them directly. But it's like they're like, they never claimed they were pop punk to, as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. So then when Forget and Not Slow Down comes out, it to me, it sounds like all the previous albums. Because mm-hmm. I always knew they were more like a pop rock band, like a Weezer. To me, right. I always thought of Reliant K as like a, a pivot from Weezer. Because you can even say in some ways Weezer is like pop punk. Weezer is sort of like 90s pop punk where you have like the Lemonheads or the Replacements or all these other kind of like slightly nerdy like le- like like Empire Records punk. You know what Ooh, I mean? Now you're like that kind my of language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like Chris Gethard punk. Like this kind of like we're not like we're not wearing like leather and studded <laughs> shit, <laughs> studded stuff. <laughs> you know, like Pop rock. That's how I thought of Reliant K. Yeah. So now, long explanation, just to say, Forget Not Slow Down was not a change. But people thought at the time in all these reviews that it was such a big change. And they were like, well, we'll show you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Reliant K was like, we'll show you what a change in our sound is. This is their shortest feature length album. Oh, is it? It is. It, uh, it closes in at around 38 minutes with the mm. bonus track. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have not heard the bonus track, it comes in at around 35. <laughs> hey, there are two bonus tracks. I learned that listening to the Reliable J podcast. Oh, are there? There's one on Amazon, apparently, and there's one on Apple Music. And I was like, oh, good to know that. I didn't know that. Um, well, I'm not sure I did not know that, so I didn't look at what the Amazon one was. Uh, but it's it's funny because even the self-titled comes in at 46 minutes, hmm. which you would kind of think of as being their shortest album. Right. Um, and then all their other full-length albums are 50-plus minutes. Um, I think that the longest is Air for Free at 59. Wow, I never realized that. <laughs> I never knew their albums were so long. Yeah. That's so funny. I've yeah. never looked at that. When MXPX released their newest album, and because I'm, I'm like also entrenched, because I'm like entrenched in mxpx fandom because i do the mxpx memes account everyone was like clapping because mxpx mxpx's newest album is like 30 minutes like right around the dot and they have other albums that are like reach 46 minutes and stuff so it's like oh they brought in a tight 30 (laughs) so i know that's like but i had never previously in my life like paid attention to how long mxpx's records were until all those discussions with the new album so now i'm having the same thing with nine k i never noticed (laughs) And it's so funny that when we were on vacation, we couldn't get through listening to the whole album. <laughs> but right before we sat down to record tonight, I went ahead and listened to the full album by myself without you involved. And I'm like, <laughs> this is actually pretty good. Like, this is a good... If this was like the Matt Thiessen solo record, like, I'd be like, this is pretty good. Oh, this is great, yeah, actually. There yeah. was a lot of songs I was really enjoying on this album. If this was not a Reliant K album, it would be fine. It's it's the fact that it's a Reliant K album that, and I don't know, I feel like maybe that's why people didn't take to it or why the fans didn't really take to it. And I get it. Teeson had been writing for Owl City. He has um, songwriting credits for a lot of pop artists like mm-hmm. Kelly Clarkson and Katy Perry. And I found one list that said he did a big time Rush song. <laughs> And you know, like he was one of the three, one of he was one of the writers on that really big Carly Rae Jepsen Owl City song from a few years back. Mm-hmm. Um, the one on and, the Wreck-It Ralph soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Is that the one with Carly Rae Jepsen? I, I don't mean, know. There's yeah, a, there's there is. A few. Like, okay. She's, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. So he was one of the writers on that. So I get them being like, "Hey, let's do, let's try and translate this into a Reliant K album," but it just, I don't know. Oh, no, it is not the Wreck-It Ralph song. He did write the Wreck-It Ralph song, though. Oh, okay. He did co-write the Wreck-It Ralph song. Okay. Uh, the list... The, uh, so I oh, tried man. to find a Wreck-It list. Wreck-It Ralph 1 is so good. <laughs> and Wreck-It Ralph 2 is such a disappointment. It's just like, really... It's just like, okay, fan fiction. It's just like... Oh. You say that having never read any fan fiction. <laughs> I've never read any Wreck-It Ralph fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so what were you saying? About- oh, just that um I think that that 
this album didn't do well with pre-existing Reliant K fans. Now, if you had never heard Reliant K and you heard this album, I actually wonder if someone who came in with this album and then went backwards Mm -hmm. to listen to Reliant K, how they would feel about it. Mm -hmm. Because it is such a departure Mm -hmm. from what they usually do. Well, for weeks leading up to us eventually getting to this episode, you were telling me things you were learning about Collapsible Lung because you basically are the two. Like, I was always like, yeah, I don't really like Collapsible Lung. Like, maybe like a couple songs. Like, like, as of this morning, um, as of this afternoon, I'm like, yeah, Collapsible Lung is pretty good. Like, (laughs) but leading up to it, you were like finding research about why Collapsible Lung was written in the way it was. And you mentioned to me all that stuff about Matt Thiessen had been writing for all these other people and he's like can I bring this same sort of songwriting format into Reliant K he's like basically like take it bring it to his home project essentially and in a way that made sense to me it's like yeah if that's all the stuff he's been doing then it's going to influence actually it's not that different from a lot of other bands I know but one I can think of is Blink-182 when Blink-182 sort of went on hiatus after like a slight height. It's not their breakup, but after um, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, and then Tom DeLonge goes off to start Boxcar Racer. Like, his Boxcar Racer stuff really influenced the next Blink-182 album. Mm-hmm. So it's like he goes off, does this side project, and when they all come back as Blink-182 for their self-untitled album, mm-hmm. it's like, well, basically, in a way, it's like Boxcar Racer has been brought into Blink-182. So it kind of makes sense that... Matt Thiessen leaves and sort of drifts off from Reliant K, goes out, does this whole other world of stuff, Mm -hmm. comes back to Reliant K, and he's like, hey, I'm ready. (laughs) Barbershop has grown stale. I'm ready to bring it into (laughs) strange new worlds. (laughs) But... (laughs) <laughs> what what I what I realized last week when we talked about Forget and Not Slow Down or when I did research for Forget and Not Slow Down is learning about how Matt Thiessen was in like apparently a really bad place or just a really difficult, challenging place mm-hmm. when he started writing Forget and Not Slow Down. And he goes on that hiatus, or not hiatus, but he goes on that vacation, that like solo writer's retreat mm-hmm. to that cabin for six months and it's just him writing that whole album just him writing these songs and like pretty much that whole album is just like and then he comes back to Reliant K to the group and he's like here are the songs I wrote for half a year right or was it three months whatever I think it was three I don't remember okay <laughs> I'm making the I'm, I'm, I'm expounding upon the legend but it's three months he goes off by himself and he writes an entire album about his pain and his difficulty and that's a, and uh, you know that's an album all about dealing with pain and dealing with changes. So having discovered that about Forget and Not Slow Down, in a way, to me, when you talked about how this album was written, it made sense to me that they basically be like, Forget and Not Slow Down was written in such not only a heavy time for Matt Thiessen, but in such a very like strong way for him to have written the whole album by himself over three months with no one else around, just him in a cabin. He's like almost comes back. It's like, let's make this a little easier. (laughs) Let's bring in a lot of other songwriters. Let's have fun. Let's make it a party. And maybe that doesn't like Hmm. communicate into the final songs. Maybe that kind of like, you know, unfortunately that might damage the way that individuals hearing the album for the first time do or don't accept it as a Reliant K album. But I think it made, now I'm realizing that it kind of makes sense for the history of Reliant K Hmm. to come from Forget and Not Slow Down and to do something that is almost completely the opposite with Collapsible Lung, where it's not just about Matt Thiessen, and it's not just about dwelling and trying to figure out what's wrong with, you know, what's wrong with stuff that's going on, what, why, why, all these problems going on. It's like, let's have a fun time with all my friends, all these people that I like their songwriting. And yeah, I don't like every song on this album, but I think, that, like, in a way... And this this is not to say that it's not an attempt at a big pop album. It is also that, but in a way, I see this thread underneath "Collapsible Long" of where they it was it was a little bit of a celebration. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really nice way of looking at it. I like that. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to like the songs on the album, <laughs> but it, at least like I'm hoping it, it gave me an appreciation for why this album exists yeah. in the way it does. Yeah. I still, this is not something I put on to just rock out to really like, yeah. with, with a couple exceptions, but. I actually, I, 
I was thinking about it earlier, and I like your vo- viewpoint a lot better because mine is a lot darker. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I kind of saw this album was a lot of these writers that they brought on right. are big pop writers, right. writers who have written songs for Beyonce and Lady Gaga mm-hmm. and really huge pop acts. And I'm like, was this their attempt at making a huge pop record that went to like, you know, top 20? I think, however, I, despite everything I said, I do think it is also that. And, and it, and it's sad because it really didn't do that. It right. didn't like launch them back to that be my escape and further stardom. Right. So to speak, it just kind of exists. There isn't even a proper music video for any song off this album. There's just lyric videos. Right. But I mean, that's actually how the industry was kind of going with those lyric videos on YouTube. We didn't talk about it last week, but there's no music videos for for Forget and Not Slow Down. There's definitely not one for the song Forget and Not Slow Down, and that was a single. Yeah, I guess not. I don't think there are any. I agree. It is sort of like you have to have both it's kind of a a story you have to balance and there are so many and the other thing is like i've been listening to music like popular music (laughs) i don't want to say pop music but i'm listening to popular music since like 1994 right like i'm I'm old right (laughs) so i've been like going to the record store and watching mtv and listening to the radio since 1994 so there have been bands that I've discovered that I'm like, this is, the, you know, this is the best band I've ever heard. Like Weezer and Green Day and Foo Fighters and Beck. Like these are early bands that were like my favorite bands in the mid nineties. And then they come out with another album where I'm like, this doesn't really, like I was expecting something from this next album and it didn't quite hit that for me. Green Day took a long time for me to feel that way. I didn't even really feel that way until relatively recently. Weezer, I stayed with for a really long time. Foo Fighters, I dropped off of pretty quickly. Beck, I fell off of pretty quickly. So it's like, yeah, that I'm used to this idea that a band that you really love will go off in another direction. That maybe you're like, why did they decide to do this? I can't follow them. It just kind of happens. It happens in real life. Happens in relationships. <laughs> and I don't mean just with girls. I mean with everyone. <laughs> Sometimes you have friends who sort of like, this This is what they're becoming. And like yeah. you're like, well, I don't really want to hang out in that way. I don't like the people they're hanging out with. Maybe it's not a bad situation. Maybe it's not like they've become some sort of awful political thing that you can't agree with. Maybe it's just like they're going off living their life over here with this type of group of people. And it's like, well, those are nice people, but I don't want to hang out with them all the time. So unfortunately, I'm kind of off from this friend for now. That's sort of the way relying, I feel with Collapse of Belong. It's like, well, they went off and did Collapse mm-hmm. of Belong and... I can kind of hang out with them a little bit. I'm not really totally into their new friends. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm just going to hang out over here and wait until they come back with air for free. (laughs) Which is funny because we've talked about this a lot on the podcast already and in real life. But people really do see Forget and Not Slow Down, Collapse of a Lung, and Air for Free as the next trilogy. Yeah, it's so weird. Jessica doesn't. I am, again, 50-50 on that. Like, I understand how other people see it that way, but I myself don't really see see it that way exactly. No, to me, this is just Forget and Not Slow Down fits in with the previous Mm -hmm. three or two albums to make that the next trilogy. Also, that's how math works. So you go three, three, and then three again. Uh So Reliant K also, we're waiting on the next album. Right. To complete the trilogy. You gotta come back, Reliant K. You gotta come back, guys. And um, yeah, this just... We haven't even talked about the song that is the title of the episode of this podcast. (laughs) The first song off the album is called Don't Blink. And I really like this song. I think it's probably my favorite song off of this album. And maybe to your point, when you taught me about how there were so many guest writers on this album that had written for big pop acts... This is one of the very few tracks that is credited only to Hoops and Tyson. Mm-hmm. So this, to me, this really has a vibe that you could take this song, Don't Blink, and maybe change the production, maybe tweak it a little bit. You could drop it on almost any other album. You could make the out, you could make the guitars heavier, and you could put it on five score. You could almost take the song as it exists and put it on, um, you know, Anatomy or or two lefts like uh, this sounds... I mean, you'd have to make it a little more rock yeah and i mean because yes yeah, them- thematically the message is very much a reliant k message mm-hmm. and that that <laughs> so many of the first tracks as we've discovered are about f- 
fixing your mistakes or wishing to correct your mistakes, mm-hmm. this is the first one where it's like they took a 90 degree, t- not even a 180 degree turn, but they took a 90 degree turn and went off to another thing. It's like instead of worrying about your mistakes, it's like actually looking at the future. Yeah. He's saying, don't you blink or it's gone. He's like, not even the future. He's not saying, think, look forward to the future. He's saying, live in the present. That's what this song is about. And I think that's really nice that that Matt Thiessen, at this point, he's like, here's the first track of this album. Instead of dwelling on the past, like so many of our previous first tracks have done, this song is about living today. Don't blink or it's gone. I'm terrified of life for way too long. Th- that fits perfect. See, so, yeah. so much about Forget and Not Slow Down is about being terrified of life and dealing with it in that hopeful way that Reliant K and Matt Thiessen always deal with tragedy. Mm-hmm. He always deals with it in a hopeful way. That is what Forget and Not Slow Down, the album, is about. Don't Blink is about, like, we're living for today. Yep. <laughs> and they are living for today because the sound of the album is so of its day. <laughs> but I really like this song. I like it a lot. And I think, like, if they, you know, like I said, if they put this on air for free, if they put this on free, well, like, I don't think it would fit thematically in Forget and Not Slow Down. But mm-hmm. if they did this song for air for free, on air for free, it would, I, I don't think anyone would challenge that it's a great Real NK song. Yeah, there's there's other songs on this album that do sound like if you just change some stuff around, they could be a little bit more Reliant K. Mm-hmm. Like, to me, Disaster is the closest thing to a Reliant K song off this album, both uh, lyrically and musically, except right. for the chorus. And that's the only song which Thiessen is solely credited mm-hmm. as, song, as a songwriter. And the only other song that only has... Matt and Matt on the song uh, listed on the song is the the eponymous track, "Collapsible Lung," mm-hmm. the ending track. So it's just those three. If if you could make a case that just those three songs are the pure Reliant K songs mm-hmm. on the album, it's those. It's which, "Don't Blink," "Disaster," and "Collapsible Lung." Yeah, which I actually when I was I was I watched the the three uh, lyric videos that they have for this album, and they do "Collapsible Lung." They do an intro and an outro. It's a, like a real stripped down acoustic. And I was like, this I like. This I listen. I would listen to. There's something about this whole album, though. Just too many cooks in the kitchen. Gloria had five songwriters credited to it. Lost Boy had four. And I just think that there <sighs> is, uh, much like screenwriting, something to say about songwriting, about too many writers. Have you ever seen the live action Flintstones movie? <laughs> that movie's got like 25 writers and it is so good. Um, Touche. So on songmeetings.com, there was one post. Yep, I saw that. Oh, you saw that. It was by A.E. Diaz 10 on August 13th, 2013. And he said, this is the aftermath and of Forget and Not Slow Down where you can feel how Matt is restored and is feeling good again. He is totally reminded by God that he's been totally reminded by God that with what (laughs) he is totally reminded by God that with him, happiness is all around. That sentence makes total sense when I read it slowly. Love is always there and life is not terrifying again. And although he is not forgetting all the bad moments he had, he is will he is willing to be near God again. And that's the thing that sometimes we, I feel like in the last two songs that we've talked about, we've kind of not necessarily thought about, but Matt Thiessen definitely still believes in God, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about God and religion and stuff. Like maybe we're waiting for more obviously Christian songs to talk about it. But these first, these, all these first tracks off these albums are very like masked in this idea that would be universal to lots of different people. Mm -hmm. But, like, I can totally see how that's true. Like, you know, he's like... None of these songs yeah. on this album are Christian or could be categorized as Christian. No, I'm serious. I forgot I turned down that alley just now because <laughs> she has talked about this ahead of time. No, I'm, I'm She's serious. like, this is the least Christian Reliant K album. Well, it is. They, listen, and I don't have a problem with that. I listen to secular music. As right. I stated before, I did not know what the difference was between secular she, and non-secular. I taught her the word secular in, exactly. like, 2008. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'd already yeah. known each other for years yeah. before I told her what secular meant. I have meant. no problem. I listen to, like, Which is kind of the right of way to look at it. Like, yeah. there shouldn't be a line between... The only reason there should be a line between secular and Christian music is for people who don't want to hear Christian music. 
Yeah. So, I mean, listen, I have no problem. I don't even have a problem with them not having a Christian song off this album. That's cool. I would listen to it anyway if it were my kind of sound that I enjoy listening to. Mm -hmm. Like, I would totally be fine with that. But it was the fact that this album, that, that you take a band who, and MXPX is a great example of this. MXPX said, hey, we're not doing the Christian thing anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically. They've never, fu- yeah, they've never like full on, sa- like a lot of people want them to have the song that says, we're not Christian anymore, <laughs> F God. <laughs> but they've done, not done that. Right. But because they to just them, it's of... like, it's none of your business. It's yeah. like, we're just going to keep being a band like we've always wanted to be. Yeah, but they, they had their sort of departure and you kind of knew that they were doing a departure. Now, Reliant K has just been like, we are who we are and we do our thing, but like they have Christian numbers. They at least have positive lyrics that don't cross a certain line. Right. They have, they have albums that could be sold in the Christian store or the Virgin mega store. Don't look at me like that, <laughs> but and I'm, I'm putting on the mom hat here for a second. <laughs> I was going to say I'm that. putting on the mom hat here for a second. And I want to say that having an album where you, the most you mention of God and like, it's not a problem. I'm just saying is I think there's like one line in collapsible lung and then in disaster, there's like a reference to church and then coming home and banging afterwards or something like that's essentially (laughs) what the idea is. Uh So, but that's the thing is that there are songs in here about drinking. There are songs on here about one night stands. If you were one of those people who just wanted to hear more positive, not offensive lyrics, and Reliant K was your favorite band, and this album came out, how would you feel? Like, you and I don't care. We're like, whatever. We listen to... I listen to Lana Del Rey. Like, I don't (laughs) care. She talks about sleeping with Satan. Whatever. (laughs) It's cool. I love it. Does she? (laughs) No. Oh, okay. Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Gods and Monsters is a great track, but you gotta gotta be in just the right mindset. Anyways, um... No, but I'm just saying, like, I don't have a problem with it. I just feel weird about the vibe of this album Mm -hmm. coming from their background and never having this line of, okay, we're not really doing this sort of thing anymore. We're going to start doing something else. And then Air for Free, they completely come back to it. And two of my all-time favorite, my actual favorite Christian songs are off that album. Like, they come back, and Air for Free is just, and we'll talk about it next week, but I love that album. It's so beautiful, and the whole thing is positive, and it's lovely, and it's just a great album. Mm-hmm. But it's it's where I feel like they should have gone and not done Collapsible Lung, as Reliant K. Mm-hmm. Well, we haven't talked a lot about this song. I don't have a ton of notes on it, other than, obviously, what I said, that I think it is Matt Thiessen coming out of another side of a tunnel mm-hmm. and saying... I'm happy, you know, I'm happy again. I'm ready for life. And hopefully if you agree with my narrative of why this album is the way it is, I don't disagree that it is their reaching pop album. It is their, there, there's a certain amount of pandering. It's a rough word, but I think there is an amount of pandering. But in a way, I think it's like, this is what we want to do. And I don't disagree with the album. There's so many, like I said, there's so many other bands who turned and did different things with their careers. And I was like, Forget you guys. That's so stupid. Why did you do this? Mm -hmm. But that's not how I feel about Reliant K doing Collapsible Lung. At the time, I was just like, oh, you know, good for them. I guess that makes sense. But now, it makes so much more sense to me that this album is the way it is. Don't Blink, I think, is a classic Reliant K song. It's it's a song that they still play to this day. It's Mm -hmm. You know, well, 2016 being the last time they were on tour. Um, It's on the live album. It's on the second live album, which we've barely talked about because we haven't hit a lot of songs from that live album. One thing I will say is that the lyric video, (laughs) watching the lyric video, I realized I had a line wrong, which was, I thought he said, life life is beautiful and true. Life is beautiful in you. Oh. Meaning the girl that he's now in love with. Right. It's like life is beautiful the way, because this is the way I feel about you, Jess. I look at you and I say, life is beautiful in you. (laughs) But he actually said, life is beautiful and new. Yes. Which is a much more simple line, but I like my line. Life is beautiful in you. So those are basically all my thoughts on (laughs) the song itself. I really like, you know, I'll probably put this, now that I've really been listening to this song a lot this week, Mm -hmm. I probably put this, I would put this on a playlist along with other songs and 
Like I said, I listened to Collapse of Belong for the first time, and I'm like, hey, some of these songs aren't bad. <laughs> so maybe there's a couple songs on this album that I would listen to more often. Did you watch the uh, two super short behind-the-scenes videos of the making of this album? I didn't even know they existed. Yeah, I went into the uh, Collapsible Lung playlist on the Reliant K's official YouTube page. Mm-hmm. And the first one is just a compilation of artsy shot on iPhone videos with a vintage filter put on them to make them look like 8mm film. Okay. Look at them putting a filter on beauty. <laughs> Hypocrites. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe that's they looked back at that video and they said this was a mistake. We shouldn't have put a filter between beauty and our eye. Uh, And then there's just like some pretty like guitar noodling over it. There isn't any talking in that one. Uh, But there's a second one that's like two and a half or three minutes long. And it's just the guys having fun and getting ready to record songs at Tyson's house and drilling holes in the floors for cables and stuff like that. And uh, having staring contests. So, yeah. Tyson kind of looks like a cult leader. He's got like these mutton chops that fade into this like short beard. I don't know. Hold on. I suppose so. <laughs> Jessica just showed me. She, did you take that picture? Did you grab that screen cap? I did. Jessica grabbed a screen cap on her phone and she showed it to me. I wish I could wear. Oh, I wish I was skinny enough to wear a tank top all the time. <laughs> As it is, I can only wear tank tops around the house. It's so hot this summer. That's what it's going to be, folks. All summer long, we're just going to complain in each episode about how hot it is. At the end of the summer, we're going to review the It's Getting Hot in Here song, even though it's not real Lion K and the Weird Al version. Did you have anything else to say about Collapsible Lung, your favorite Relying K album? <laughs> Jessica's so top most. To oh, you have so many things. Well, you know what? I we will have save them though because we have twenty-eight or twenty-eight more minutes worth of the album to talk about in the That's future. That's right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. Well, that was a journey. <laughs> I feel like we're ready to take the second half of our journey. <laughs> Which is covers and videos and things that I found. If anyone related to the band chooses only one episode to listen to, (laughs) I sincerely hope it's not this one. (laughs) It's gotta be this one. As I mentioned, this song is on the 2016 live vinyl, which is an album we love. We play it around the house all the time. Mm -hmm. We really do. I'm not saying that. We do. we, We really do play it around the house all the time. And there was someone recently put a YouTube video up of the 2016 live album. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate their effort, but like there's something happened with however they digitized the vinyl so that like it's just it's a slight tinniness. So maybe we should be <laughs> maybe we should bootleg it next for YouTube. <laughs> Here is the 2016 live version. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica was just doing air guitar. <laughs> you like this song. You spent all your research to, to figure out to te- how, to, how to tear this album down. You spent no time on why you love this song, and you love this song. I'm coming around slowly. <laughs> <laughs> we must have, we saw the, the Switchfoot tour in 2016 here in LA at the Palladium. Yeah, Searching for America. Yeah, and they must have, they definitely played this song. But yeah. at the time, we, we were didn't such, know it. yeah, we didn't yeah. know it because we were so not a part of Collapsible Long. No, we were we purists. Were, we were purists. <laughs> we just had a, at the time, we just had a tinge of air for free and every album before Collapsible Long. So yeah, I really like this live out this live version. I think it it kind of shows how it's just another Reliant K song. No matter what problems you have with this album as a whole, like you can hear this song, and I hope this remains a staple of their career for as long as they're still a band. Please still be a band, Reliant K. Please come back. Please come back. I didn't find any official acoustic versions. Oh. 
but I found a Nightcore version. Nice. Maybe you will like the album as a whole if it's all Nightcore. Tangled, twisted fears Been waiting a while now on the dawn Seems like the sun may never come I made my way through the darkest night To the break of day on the other side For some time the light's been creeping in Now I'm feeling like I could trust again You're the only person who reminds me Love is beautiful and true Life is beautiful and new Oh, you're the only person who reminds me I don't understand. I thought you were going to play a different version of the song. <laughs> no, that is a different version. They sped it up like by 5% or something. Are you sure? As far as Nightcore goes, like that was not very sped up. Maybe they tested it and they were like, well, we can't go too fast. We got to go just a little fast. I did love the uh, picture that they chose to make the uh, <laughs> yes. the video tile of. It's like a samurai woman <laughs> on the ocean with an island behind her. And the thing is... An anime. An Samurai anime. Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An anime. Because that's what Nightcore is. It's always pictures of anime girls. But I'm kind of like freaked out right now because I have been drinking this Deschutes <laughs> Black Butte beer. And like I'm looking at this picture of this like white skinned anime girl like with breath coming out. And I'm looking at you and behind you is our window <laughs> looking out at the San Fernando <laughs> Valley skyline. And you're like... Hey, I'm sitting here. Oh boy. On the nighttime skyline myself. Oh boy. Now people know we live in the valley. We do live in the valley. <laughs> it's real easy living here. It's not crazy like the middle of the city. So, anyway, <laughs> that's about it for versions of the song that are derivative of the original track. No, it's not. Because you know what I have? I just got a little bit more drunk right here. <laughs> But we're having fun because this is the the most fun album that Reliant K put out. Oh this wow! Is, Hot take. Here is on SoundCloud user Valeria Lorham uploaded the actual studio album. <laughs> no copyright intended. <laughs> they don't put that here. They re- they uploaded the song backwards. Oh, are you wow. ready for this? I am a David Lynch fan. Let's do this. <laughs> He said, Hail Satan. I heard it. It's in there. No, I had beer in my mouth. I wanted to laugh. Oh, let's just hear the... That song rocks. It's so good backwards. I love it. (laughs) It's great. I love this song. It's so good. Okay, so that's it for songs derivative of the actual track. Into the weird stuff, we have a track oh, I'm review. sorry, now we're getting into the now weird Now we're getting stuff? into the derivative, the like non based off of the actual track weird stuff. Album Review TV, which I guess renamed themselves Beyond AR TV at some point. In 2013, they did a review. They did a three, did a two minute and 40 second review of this track. I think we can listen to the whole thing right now. And he says... Time for a track review. <laughs> before he says that, he says, Forgive my voice. It's a bit scratchy since I've been sick. So let's forgive his voice. Just like everyone forgave our audio quality on the Forget and Not Slow Down episode, let's forgive his scratchy voice. Ready? Time for a track review right here on Beyond ARTV. Beyond the reviews, Reliant K's new single, Don't Blink, off of their upcoming album, Collapsible Lung. I wish I could say that there was a set release date for that, but there's not as of recording this video. So when there is, I will definitely let you guys know. Check out my website for all information like that. But for today's track review, I'm talking about Don't Blink. The lyric video is available if you want to check that out and listen to the song for yourself. It's in the description. It's got a sweet Linkin Park poster in the background. He does. R.I.P. Chester. Mm. There was an awesome Chester Bennington mural 
right here in the San Fernando Valley, which we all know we live in now. They, <laughs> why, why do you keep calling it the San Fernando Valley? It's not like we live in San Fernando. We just live in the valley. <laughs> it's the San Fernando Real valley. close to the hill. But they got rid of that Chester Bennington mural recently. It's so sad. R.I.P. Chester. But Don Blink sees the band taking on more of a poppier sound. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all. Overall, it's still got all the qualities of a Reliant K song. It's got a nice positive message to it. It's got really solid lyrics overall. It puts off a good vibe and is good instrumentally. That's what Reliant K has always been and they've always been consistent. And if it's a little bit more catchier and, I don't know, more sing-songy, like sing-along type style, then so be it. I don't understand all the hate and criticism that the song is generating from longtime fans. Does the song have a dubstep breakdown in it or is it filled with dance beats? No. So the song's sounding a lot better now, right? So Jess, can you agree that this album doesn't have a breakdown in the middle with dance beats? Um, I know the song doesn't, but a number of other songs on this album do. <laughs> and it's funny because he reviews the album before... He reviews this song before the album came out. Right, because this so was a single. So in a way, he didn't know. Yeah. He didn't know what he was in for. catchy for this song. You're going to be singing along pretty much every time you hear it. I feel like... Oh, oh, now don't you blink away. I think it's just catchy the guitar. Oh, ARTV. You're my favorite singer of all time. <laughs> oh, you know what hasn't come up in Reliant K songs for us in a while? What? Is little kids having a grand old time just <laughs> just, just dancing around to yeah. their favorite Reliant K song. I found two videos like that. Oh. Well, actually, one is it's little kids. And one, it's like a teenager. But this one, this is so beautiful. <laughs> it is like one shot, almost uninterrupted. They filtered it through the InShot app, which I know the InShot app because I run an account called Ska Pikachu, <laughs> where I post footage of Pikachu dancing to Ska songs. And I use the InShot app all the time to add effects if I think like this song needs a little extra. Danny has a really big web presence. So if you if you message us or whatever, you're likely talking to him. If you want to talk to me, which you probably don't, but if you want to talk to me. like If you DM an account on Twitter, let us know. there's a one out of four chance you're talking to me. <laughs> just in general, just any Twitter. I'm going to... Whoop, whoop. I'm going to mute the song because we know the song at this oh, point. Oh, this looks like our nieces. It, yeah, it looks like my nieces. Yeah. They're just like walking through a nice green field with some jungle gyms. And they're just like looking out to the sky. And the parents who must be so proud of these children are just like, look, listen to this Reliant K song. We love it. Oh, that's there sweet. are later songs that are possibly about sex, but we don't let them <laughs> listen to those songs. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah, this is by um, Timothy Sullivan, uploaded on July 8th, 20, 2018. Don't Blink by Reliant K, featuring the fantastic talents of Amelia and Lucas Sullivan. Here is this rather fun video, and it's only like, they only took the first 50 seconds of the, 57 seconds of the song, so I feel like I can have you watch the whole video, and maybe we'll just edit some of it down. Um, oh, wow, this one actually put... In the title. Yes! And then in all caps. In the title. In the title. No copyright intended. That is what I wanted to mention because we've talked about it. People putting in their YouTube videos, no copyright intended. What does that mean? Everyone intends their copyright. So I'll turn down the song, but Jessica, narrate what's, let, let everyone know oh, what wow. we're watching. There's a girl with a flower crown. She's probably a Lana Del Rey fan. Love it. Loving the Lana vibes. And it's um, all still photos. They didn't yeah. take an actual video. It's like, it's almost like uh, the French film that inspired uh, 12 Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, wow. Now there's a, a different girl who set up a tent under a play set and is now coming out of it. And now some of the lyrics were written in chalk on a playground. That's fun. Uh, ground. Yeah, that's what, this should be the lyric video. This should have been the lyric video. This is cute and fun. This is real cute and fun. This is Aww, uploaded by. How we roll three, five, two, five. 
Oh, they didn't do the whole song. No, they didn't. (laughs) I can only imagine they're like, well, this is taking a lot of work. I think we're done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Every, every uh, frame is, is a new photo. So that's really great though. That took a lot. Yeah, that was really cute. That's great. Um, it's a lot of editing. Good for you guys. Yeah. Give them a like. Oh, 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 hold on. Like. Nice. And I'm going to leave them a little comment. Oh, hey, no. guys. No, no, no. Danny. My name no. is Danny. No. I'm the host of a, bl- <laughs> of a Blinkwin 55 <laughs> podcast, of a Reliant K podcast, <laughs> and I'm drunk on a Monday night. Oh, no. Wanted you to know... We reviewed your song. I have been leaving comments on some people's videos. Now you, know. you tell me? Just a few of them. The ones that were really positive on, I've been like, hey, check out our podcast. We talked about your song. We talked about your cover. Look at your shameless self-promotion. <laughs> okay. So on to real covers. Again this week, classic cover bots, the guitar tribute players, and the piano dreamers have done more covers of this song. If you remember who I'm talking about, what they did yep. last week yeah. with Forget and Not Slow Down. Um, and you mentioned you didn't find a ton of covers this week, though. I found more than I thought I found. Oh, okay. So the Piano Dreamers cover bot this week, you can imagine Don't Blink with being nice and soft on the piano. Yes, absolutely. We don't need to play that right now, but I really do like the cover bot guitar tribute players this week of Don't Blink. Let's listen to that. Life is beautiful in you, girl. (laughs) Welcome to my coffee house. That was beautiful. That's really beautiful, and I think... When you sort of ensconce yourself in like, <laughs> political is the wrong word, but the like political nature of like, why did Real NK make this album? Why is this so poppy? When you kind of hear the the acoustic tribute version, mm-hmm. you're like, there is just a classic Real NK, Matt Thiessen, Matt Hoops melody on the underneath of this song. There is. This is really beautiful. You just made me open my eyes and see a totally new way of seeing the song. That was really pretty. I was just thinking, I was like, oh yeah, this could totally go on like air for free or something like that. This like very stripped down um, acoustic is really pretty. I think that's an issue that I, that I just have with this album is it's just, there's so much going on Mm -hmm. that, that doesn't need to be going on. And there's a few songs that incorporate that on air for free as well that I'm, I'm not, as into like I think I even mentioned previously that I love the song Air for Free, but what I love most is is it live. Is it live? Yeah. yeah. Because the they don't isn't... have all that like extra boo bang bang kind of <laughs> stuff going on with it. And I like that. Like it just sounds so good, just played straight. One thing I'm kind of figuring out as we do this podcast is I don't need to play every cover I find. So I just want to give credit to Ben Lingstad. B E N. Everyone has to spell Ben. Why did I spell Ben? Ben L Y N G S T A D. He and two other guys did like a cover together where they kind of recorded in different places, right? They did a whole acoustic full band version. Oh, nice. It's okay. They're a little off, like maybe because they were filming in different bedrooms. Oh, maybe. <laughs> they were a little bit off. So I don't want to play that because then, you know, th- they did a good job. They did a good, okay job, but cool. it doesn't sound the best. Uh, let me see. They're called, they call themselves Cutting Space. They're, tr- I called them Trio Acoustic. It's still loading. And we'll hear this because I think they did a pretty fun job here. The drummer <laughs> has a real Matt Thiessen look going. He has oh. the curly blonde hair. Oh, yeah. And a tank top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
there is a guy there is a guy on acoustic and a girl uh who i guess is just there to sing and like i said the matt Thiessen acolyte on drums <laughs> and i really like the beat that the drummer gets going here on their acoustic version again this is cutting space uh that's what they're called on youtube cutting space they uploaded this on march 15th 2014. Fun. Well, They're in their fun. living room with a yeah. lot of candles around, not lit. Yeah. Um, that's cute. Yeah, I like that beat. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, something I noticed with a lot of these acoustic covers is like a lot of people didn't really want to sell the ooh, 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 that whole part. Mm-hmm. They just kind of like they just kind of like, hey, let's forget about that part. Um, they could just take you doing it and cut it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, if you found my singing the ooh, 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 part to be like a little, you know, ooh, just, hey, that was rough. That was listening to him do that, that part. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. It was heard. beautiful. Well, let's listen to <laughs> Becky Sechrist because she is going to sing the song with no instrumentation whatsoever. Hey, guys. I'm going to be singing Don't Blink by Reliant K. Don't know where to go from here. My thoughts are tangled, twisted fears. Been waiting a while now on the dot. Seems like the sun may never come. I made my way through the darkest night to the break of day on the other side. Sometime the light's been creeping in. Now I'm feeling like I could trust again. You're the only person who reminds me. Love is beautiful and true. Life is beautiful and new. Oh, you're the only person who reminds me. Hold on now, don't you blink or it's gone. I've been terrified of love for way too long. Oh no, now don't you blink or it's gone. So when I heard that by myself, I was like, oh. <laughs> I thought it she did great. She did great. It's really nice to hear it in a communal uh, situation like this with you because she sounds really beautiful. But at the time, I was like, it was just like so earnest and so pure. I was like, I'm not prepared for this. And I, she stares directly into the camera. <laughs> She's looking into my soul. Uh, but she has a lovely voice. It's really nice. There's one point where she she sings. The, I don't know if she. I don't think she has a headphone in mm-hmm. and is listening to the song. But she does the timing of the song flat out. Like, if there's a pause where she wouldn't sing, Mm -hmm. she doesn't sing. She just sits there looking at the camera for like five seconds. Nice. So she took that song very seriously. Okay, and here's the only like... Oh, this is kind of fun. This is kind of fun. This is kind of fun. This is a band called Dying for Leverage. And they are performing it live on some sort of quad. (laughs) They're at the Spring Jam. I'm not kidding. Look. Underneath, oh, wow. the, underneath the stage, it says yeah. Spring Jam. Nice. And nice giant letters. I wonder what kind <laughs> of material excited. those are cut out of. So here's a full band live at some sort of like college campus or something. Third song from the Spring Jam 2016. So 
what do you think? Those guys are rocking the spring jam. They are rocking so hard. I love them. Um, but then I actually, of all the songs we've ever done, I found a lot of stuff on song on SoundCloud. Oh, wow. Like, we usually find a lot of stuff on YouTube. We find some stuff on Bandcamp. But I found four covers on SoundCloud. So let's blast through these lickety split. The first one we got here is Remy Felch. Tangled, twisted fears Been waiting a while now on the dawn Seems like the sun may never come So what do you think of that? Yeah, that was really good. That, that was good. pretty cool. Let's like skip ahead to uh, sort of the middle. They turn into a little bit more of a rockin' song. Yeah. They've got a future on K-Love, or whatever <laughs> the, the Christian pop station's called. They get that sound, you know? There's a very... You know that sound you've been looking for? <laughs> Hello, McFly. Reference to first song by the first episode. Here we have Alex Farley with his Don't Blink full band cover. From here, my thoughts are tangled, twisted fears. Been waiting a while now on the dawn. Seems like the sun may never come. I made my way through the darkest night, to the break of day on the other side. For some time, the light's been creeping in. Now I'm feeling like I could trust again. You're the only person who reminds me. Is that one of the guys from They Might Be Giants? Yes, that was the third Forgotten John. That was John Farley. <laughs> it sounded like them. I guess it does. The bands all sound super legit, though. Yeah, they do. Would you believe that just like They Might Be Giants, how it was just two guys with all the instruments when they started, Alex Farley here recorded this entire thing by himself, all the parts here. Wow, by super talented. It just kind of shows like rock and roll isn't that hard. I could do it all by myself. We got two more covers here on SoundCloud. One is by SWJ, SWJ Robinson, which at first I thought it said SJW, but apparently not. And it says, Don't Blink Acoustic Cover. Oh, and you're going to, this is the one you're going to like because it's slightly got an air for free, oh. slight bluesy tinge to it. I'm excited. I already liked the like couple seconds you just yeah. played. So if, if Don't Blink was on air for free, this would be the demo for that version. Okay. My thoughts are tangled, twisted fears Been waiting a while now on the dawn Seems like the sun may never come I made my way through the darkest nights To the break of day on the other side For some time the light's been creeping in Now I'm feeling like I could trust again You're the only person who reminds me Love is beautiful and true Life is beautiful and new you're the only person who reminds me Hold on now, don't you blink or it's gone I've been terrified of life for way too long Oh no, now don't you blink or it's gone In another life, who knows what we become Love 
Love is beautiful and true. Life is beautiful and new. I really like that little breakdown part. Yeah, a lot with the, with the guitar. Yeah, I knew you'd like that. Yeah. That's your kind of music. It is. And here he has um, no note or pitch correction. He just wanted you to know that. Oh, nice. Hey, Reliant K, you did a lot of pitch correction on this album in there for free. <laughs> well, SWJ Robinson wants you to know it can be done without such a thing. So, yeah, like I said, so there's a couple other things I found, but they're all very nice. Like, people kind of take the song in ways you would expect it, basically. However, the way we will end this podcast is by mentioning that the term Don't Blink is a cover, is a title that a lot of bands love to use. <laughs> And we don't have to go through all of these. But the number one band that has... The number one artist that has a song called Don't Blink is Kenny Chesney. Because I found a lot of Kenny Chesney covers. (laughs) And there's also a Blink-182 song called Don't, which I had in mind because when Blink-155 did this song... They were like, oh, there's a Reliant K song called Don't Blink. <laughs> because that kept coming up when you search Don't right. Blink. Yeah. It, the Blink-22 yeah. song called Don't comes up. It's from their earliest released album called Buddha. So just imagine like really badly recorded early Blink-22. Yeah. Okay. And you basically got it. Okay. Um, there's so many soundcloud rappers and edm (laughs) artists who have songs called don't blink and some of a lot of them i can't play because they're sort of like out of the reach of our desire not to have an e rating on our podcast oh wow um are you sure some of those edm covers aren't just this song i listened i was like do i hear the tune do i hear the the don't blink reliant k I didn't hear it. They're just other EDM. Well, the EDM artists are just EDM. A lot of people sampled the Doctor Who thing that we parodied at the beginning nice. of the show from the the Weepy Angels. <laughs> um, <laughs> one song I really liked, before we get to Kenny, I think we'll end on Kenny Chesney, but I like this. Another song called Bl- uh, another song called Don't Blink by Blythe who I'd never heard of before, but he seems to be pretty popular. Well, it's got 3,000 views on YouTube, but this came up in a bunch of other searches. Her her SEO must be pretty good. Here she is. I'll show Jessica a picture of the lady. Uh, and here is her song called Don't Blink. Whiskey on your lips I can taste I feel it burning, it's hurting But I like it, baby I want it, want it Take it slow She said it. Yay. Little known fact, Matt Thiessen also co-wrote that song. <laughs> yes, it sounds like a collapsible lung. A collapsible lung song. That's why I wanted to play it for you. Well, hey, everyone complained about how Relying K stopped being pop punk with Forget and Not Slow Down. And then they were even less pop punk with Collapsible Lung. Well, if you wanted Relying K to write a pop punk song called Don't Blink, forget about that Blink-182 song called Don't. Let's listen to Don't Blink, the song by Us Against the World from their album, Page Two. Oh, I'm into it. Provided to you by CD Baby. (laughs) 47 views.
what do you think? That rocked. I love it. I felt like I should be like cruising down the PCH with my like surfboard in the back of my car on my way to school. At, like, I don't know, someplace that doesn't make any sense to get to from the PCH, like Beverly Hills High or something. We're going to go to Sam Goody later on yeah. and buy this on CD. Yeah. Um, that's pretty fun. It's fun. I like it. I like the cover. It's like a cartoony, like a bunch of bombs oh, and stuff. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Very. I don't know when this album, when this actual song's from, but it should be from 1998. What artist is that? It is called, they're called Us Against the World. Nice. I'm going to look them up later. So finally, we will end on what is probably a more successful song called Don't Blink. And I'm not going to play all of this song because it sets off a couple of Jessica's triggers. Uh Uh-oh. Which are like, (laughs) Jessica has certain trigger concepts like, like loved ones dying and stuff. So just imagine if the concept of don't blink is like, hey, don't blink because your loved ones will suddenly not be here. That's basically what this song is about, except it's about you not being here. Yeah. So Kenny Chesney. Oh, boy. (laughs) Apparently, in real life, Kenny Chesney was watching the news one night and he saw a 102-year-old man being interviewed on the news. And he said, hey, I'm going to write a pop country song about that. And I'm literally going to sing about what I'm doing right now as I watch a 102-year-old man be interviewed on the news. When I was a kid, about eight, nine years old. And then we're going to put out a music video where we take the actual footage I saw and start the music video with the footage of the 102-year-old man being interviewed. And in the grass, and if my body becomes the star, the moon, and all that, that was a good life. But today, my golly, the life goes like a bullet. Too fast. (laughs) Oh, Kenny. He's just plagiarizing the news report. That's exactly what he's doing. (laughs) This is just literally what's happening. He was like, oh, fudge, I got to write a song for this stupid album. What am I going to write? Kenny's looking at himself in the mirror. He's like, come on, Kenny. You got to write something. He just turns on the news. He's like, good enough. (laughs) Oh. Oh my gosh, I have heard this song before. (laughs) Whoa, I've heard this song before. Someone has played this song and I've been forced to listen to it before. (laughs) Well, you did grow up in like Georgia and Florida. No, no, no. This is way later than that. This is like new. This is 2009. Oh my God. This is is like just a couple years before uh, Collapsible Lung comes out. (laughs) This is the same year that Forget Not Slow Down came out. So maybe Matt Teeson and Matt Hoops were sitting next to each other on the couch and they were watching this music video. That would be so apropos. <laughs> that would be so apropos because first of all, Kenny Chesney just stole this old man's story for a song. And then the Matts are watching TV and they're watching CMT and they're like, hey, we should steal that. They do live in Nashville. They do. And you know what? Listen to this song, Collapsible Lung could be so much worse. <laughs> When you don't like Clouds of Along, just imagine it's not a Kenny Chesney song. But Danny, both are textbook cases of pandering. Who's that by? Bo Burham. Bo Burham, that's right. That's just textbook pandering. So good. Well, we will finally end now that we have discussed the Kenny Chesney (laughs) song. We can do one cover. We will end on one cover. Oh my gosh, you still have more? No, this is the last one. We're done with Reliant K Don't Blink covers. We're going to do one Don't Blink by Kenny Chesney cover by Niale, or Nial, N-I-A-L-L. So we will talk about more Collapsible Lung in the future. We will talk about lots of our Reliant K songs. But Uh before we get to that, let's listen to one Kenny Chesney Don't Blink inspired song. 
It's by Niall. Is that Niall, whatever his name is, from One Direction? It's definitely him. <laughs> listen to this. Ready? Are you ready to listen to this track? It's definitely him. I'm ready. So good. SoundCloud will accept anything. We could just do these for SoundCloud every week. We could just have us recording over Reliant K songs. <laughs> so good. So, Jessica. Yes. Do you have any final thoughts on Don't Blink by Kenny Chesney? <laughs> I'm trying to remember where I heard it and why. I feel like maybe your sister made me listen to oh it at some God. point. Oh my God, my sister loves so much country music. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I like, that, that I like, might have been yeah. it. I, I don't like remember some, I like country music, but like, not that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, don't forget, if you are a Kenny Chesney fan and you are mad at us now, please call <laughs> us up and curse us out. We will air it. We will bleep out the swears, but we will air, air it. Call us at 402-95-SADIE. And if you don't want us to air it, just let us know and we won't. We'll just yeah, listen right. and be like, hey, what up? Uh, we have a Gmail, which is sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com. And we're on Instagram and Twitter, both at sadiehawkinspod. So don't you blink or this podcast <laughs> could be gone. <laughs> Don't blink. 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 Blink.